Today we're at the banks of Kentucky Lake and I'm here with Adam Martin and you're the sport fish biologist here in Western Kentucky for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Tell me a little bit about sport fish biologists. What all species are you looking at? So essentially I manage the sport fish in the western 14 counties of Kentucky, primarily Kentucky and Barkley Lake. So the overall goal is to have healthy fish populations and catchable fish populations so anglers can come down here and enjoy catching fish. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about what you've been studying because you've been specifically looking at nesting and bedding fish, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. So our most popular species on Kentucky Lake and Lake Barkley are your black bass, so your largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass, as well as crappie, bluegill, red ear, all of those species will make depression nests whenever they spawn during the springtime. So you've seen them, you know, it's a fish making a bed effectively. Mm -hmm. So that kind of inspired a project, well, what can we do to improve the recruitment of our bass population? And when you say recruitment, what are you talking about recruitment? Essentially the numbers of small fish that are entering the lake. Okay. What you would do in a small pond is you would improve the spawning habitat. Mm -hmm. So you might add in some rocky material if it was mud and, and, and switch things up like that. Well, this obviously isn't a pond, but the same principle should still apply. You just have to do it a lot more. So we've been experimenting with artificial spawning habitat. So we're making artificial spawning beds out of concrete. They're about 32 inches in diameter and they're bowl shaped and we have loose gravel in the bottom of them. They're about 10 to 11 inches tall on the outside. And we're placing those along the shoreline of Kentucky Lake and Lake Barkley in the hopes that fish will use them and it's largely been pretty successful so far. When did this program start? It actually started in early 2019 and we've been contemplating it and trying to figure out what to do since about 2018. Okay, so now that the program has gotten going, this is something you will continue for a period of time and there should be some learnings that come from this, right? Sure, we've got about 500 of these artificial spawning beds in the lake so far. Okay. And we've been surveying about 68 of them experimentally by doing snorkel surveys every week for the past two years. Some of these sport fish that you manage spawn at different times. Mm -hmm. So you build this perfect nest up there for a black bass species and the bass come in and they spawn, then what happens? So the bass will start spawning around 57 degrees and they'll continue that activity until about 64 or 65 degrees. After that, you see red ear move in, then you see bluegill, and then finally you see long ear sunfish move in. Okay. They're in there starting very early whenever the red ear is spawning, trying to eat eggs. So if you're in an area and you're only catching sunfish, but it's still early, that's not necessarily a bad thing because they're there for a reason. Okay. They're there on the nest of those other fish. And you said they stayed to the very end because they spawn last. Exactly, yeah. And while our, our usage rates were about 60% for black bass, largemouth and smallmouth, our usage rates on the nest for sunfish was more like 96%. Wow. Pretty so much every single nest you can count on there being a fish in it. The number of fry that are being introduced in the lake because of the spawning habitat, we're talking hundreds of thousands, right? Oh, easily. A single red ear will produce about 30,000 eggs. Okay. Now, survival rates are very low, less than yeah. 1%. Yeah. That's the same for every fish. Yeah. But, you know, a bluegill has even more eggs. Even a bass, they'll have 12,000. The way that they defend their nests is very different by species and by the individual fish, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that red ear are extremely skittish, like you have to sneak up there cast from 40 feet away and don't splash is kind of the general thought process. That's not what I've seen, you know, snorkeling on them. If you're right there on their nest, they'll stand there and look at you. Hold the ground, huh? A bluegill is much more skittish. Okay. They'll leave, circle back, along your sunfish. They tend to be pretty aggressive too, so they'll stay right there and defend their nest. Hopefully, we can figure out why certain nests are being used and why some are not and then help that natural habitat so that the bass have more options for spawning as well as bluegill and red ear and all those other species, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, this is great information and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the phone calls and the reports for catches correlate to the success of the spawns that match this data up in a couple years. You know, this could be cutting edge stuff. Yeah, we hope it helps. Thank you so much. No problem.